Let's now take a look at the FM oscillator in Zebra. I load in the initialize preset. Let's go ahead and remove this oscillator and add in one of the FMOs. This is the main panel of the FMO, but there's also the lower pane tab, which we'll look at later on. Now the FM oscillator can run in different modes. The first is FM by input. Currently we don't have an input, so let's just skip that and try the self FM. This is your standard feedback FM. Let's push up the FM amount to hear this. You hear after a point the sound is just pure digital noise, which is quite common in feedback FM on any other synth. Very gritty sound. Ring modulation input requires an input, so we'll skip that for now. Filtered FM also requires input, so let's just check out the FM self too. It's pretty much the same as FM self, except the input to the FM is squared before fed back into itself. Let's have a listen. It breaks up just like in the other feedback FM mode, but the lower FM amount value creates a much more mellow tone at least to my ears. Let's compare the two. I'm not sure how to define that, but maybe sounds cleaner. Okay, let's now look at how the more traditional FM mode works. I'll drag the module down so there's space to add in an oscillator. Now for FM, you generally work with sine waves, so I'll change this oscillator wave shape to a sine wave. In the spectral blend mode, I'll just push up the first spike. So just the fundamental is heard. Oh, I just got rid of the first one. Okay, there we go. So let's figure out the signal flow here. If I disable the FMO, you hear just the sine oscillator. But when the FMO is turned on, the sine oscillator does not pass through to the lower area, but the sine oscillator is fed into the FMO's frequency modulation input. Push up the FM depth to hear the traditional FM sound. We can verify that the sine oscillator is not going straight to the output by bringing down the volume of the FMO. I'm playing my keyboard, but there's no output. So only FM1 is going to the output. Cool. Now when I switch to ring modulation mode, we obviously get ring modulation instead of frequency modulation. But more importantly, the oscillator one signal does go straight out to the output. This is because in ring modulation mode, there is no frequency modulation happening. It's actually a form of amplitude modulation. It's also very subtle. If you don't want to hear the oscillator one signal, you can move it to another lane and mute that lane. So currently we're actually hearing both the oscillators. Right click on the FMO and select input 2 so it gets its signal from there. Now we're only hearing the effect of oscillator 1 on FMO 1. We're not hearing the output of oscillator 1. Okay, next is filtered FM, which is the same as the FM by input, except that the FM dial does not control the FM depth. It instead opens up a low pass filter cutoff. 
So the FM amount is actually at full, which is just being filtered here. Compared to the standard FM mode, I actually prefer this filtered FM. Not as harsh. So that covers all the different modes. This button switches between mono and stereo mode. Stereo mode works in conjunction with the detune dial. In mono mode, the detune dial does just that, fine tune control. Just like in the oscillator module. But in stereo mode, you will hear how it spreads the sound across the stereo spectrum. This width dial will control the amount of stereo spread. At the lowest, it's back to mono. Then there's a tune dial, just like in the oscillator section. 48 semitones up and down. Just like in the oscillator module. This is the modulation dial for the tuning. There's vibrato, just like in the oscillator module. This is the panner and the modulation dial for the panner. Volume dial and the modulation dial for volume. All very similar to the oscillator module. Again, the convention of modulation dials being to the right of the control is being used here. Cool. So that covers all the controls of the FMOs. Well, not quite. We also need to look at the lower pane controls, which we will do next.